properties of squares 6.4c. We have two previous videos just for this lesson alone, 6.4a and b, and 10 for the entire chapter that are in the geometry playlist. Parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, and now squares, we've added squares, are sometimes referred to as special parallelograms. A square is a quadrilateral with four right angles and four congruent sides. We can show that a square is a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus. So a square has the properties of all three of these, parallelograms, rectangles, and rhombuses. It has four congruent sides, and it has four right angles. We can verify the properties of squares. We can show that the diagonals of square ABCD A, B, C, D, are congruent perpendicular bisectors of each other. So these diagonals are congruent perpendicular bisectors of each other. I'm going to show that AC is congruent to BD using the distance formula. And we need their ordered pairs, don't we? So we need the ordered pairs for A and C and we're going to put them into the distance formula. Then we're going to use the ordered pairs for B and D and put them into the distance formula. So for AC, we put the ordered pairs in and we get that AC is equal to the square root of 58. We put in the ordered pairs for BD and we get that it's also the square root of 58. So that's the length of each one. That's the distance between point A and C and the point B and D. And since A and AC equals BD, well, then segment AC is congruent to segment BD, okay? So I've got the ordered pairs here again to help us out. We need to show that segment AC is perpendicular to segment BD using the slope formula. So this is the second part of trying to show that the diagonals are congruent perpendicular bisectors of each other, okay? So this is the second thing we're going to do. First thing we did was put the points into the distance formula, all right? to show that those were congruent, that the diagonals were congruent. Now we're going to show that segment AC is perpendicular to segment BB, BD by using the slope formula. And we put in the ordered pairs according to the slope formula, and we find the slope of segment AC is 7 thirds. When we do the slope of segment BD, we get that it's negative 3 sevenths. Now do you remember what happens to perpendicular lines? Since 7 thirds multiplied to negative 3 sevenths is equal to a negative 1, then they are perpendicular. So remember when we multiply the slopes, if it equals a negative 1, they're perpendicular, okay? Now, the third thing we're going to do is show that segment AC and segment BD bisect each other by using the midpoint formula. So, if you remember, here's the midpoint formula. We got our first and second x and our first and second y, and we're going to divide them by 2. So we use the ordered pairs again, and the midpoint of segment AC is one half for x and seven halves for y. And the midpoint of segment BD is one half for x, seven halves for y. And since segment AC and segment BD have the same midpoint, they bisect each other. So from these three steps, using the distance formula, the slope formula, and then the midpoint formula, the diagonals are congruent perpendicular bisectors of each other. Okay? We can use the properties of special parallelograms in proofs. So we're going to do a two-column proof. Look at this. Doesn't it kind of look like an envelope? So it's given that EFGH is a rectangle and J is the midpoint of segment EH. We need to prove that triangle FJG, this blue one, is isosceles. So here's our two-column proof. We've got number one, EFGH is a rectangle, and J is the midpoint of EH, and that's the given. Now, be careful, because the given isn't always the first statement. It is a lot of times, most of the time, but every once in a while, it won't be the first one, okay? So keep an eye on that. Number two is that angle E and angle H are right angles. That's the definition of a rectangle. Then we've got number three, angle E is congruent to H. Well, if they're both right angles, then they're congruent to each other. It's the right angles congruence theorem. Number four says EFGH is a parallelogram because if it's a rectangle, then it's a parallelogram. And it tells us it's a rectangle in the given, see? 
Number five says segment EF here is congruent to segment HG here. If it's a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. Number six says segment EJ, this little segment right here, is congruent to HJ, this little segment here. Well, that's the definition of a midpoint. It told us in the given that J is the midpoint. Okay. That brings us to number seven that says triangle FJE, that's this little one here, is congruent to triangle GJH, this one here. And that's from side angle side from steps five. Here we have a side. Steps three, we have an angle. And step six, we have a side. So segment FJ, this one, is congruent to segment GJ, this one, because of congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. We know they have two sides and an angle that are congruent. So number nine says that triangle FJG is isosceles because of the definition of an isosceles triangle. Definition of an isosceles triangle says it's got two congruent sides, and we've shown that, okay? All right, so to wrap up the special parallelograms for now, of what we've learned, a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four congruent right angles, a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides, a square is a quadrilateral with four congruent right angles and four congruent sides. So it's like we're combining the rectangle with the rhombus, isn't it? That's four congruent right angles, which is what that has, that's four congruent sides, which is what that has. And take a look at this table I've got here. If you look, for all these properties, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, look at this, consecutive angles, supplementary, all of these properties, look at square. He's got all of them. And look at rhombus. Rhombus has all of them except the diagonals being congruent. Because it could be, you know, a rhombus could be like, like this, you know? So this diagonal could be way longer than this one, couldn't it? Okay, not a perfect drawing, but do you know what I mean? It could be like short, but long, see? So that diagonal would end up being longer, okay? That's why that dot is missing. So the first four rows show that any property of a parallelogram is a property of all special quadrilaterals. So look at this, here's parallelogram, and look, these first four rows, every single dot is filled in. See? They all share those properties. And the table shows that any property that is true for parallelograms, rectangles, or rhombuses is true for squares. And this makes sense because a square is also a parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus. And a property of any of these quadrilaterals also applies to squares. Okay? So, this is the table. And I'll put a copy of this up on Twitter or Facebook for you if you want to have a copy of this, okay? So our next lesson is we're going to construct a rhombus that's 6.4D, all right? And don't expect to only use a current lesson's properties and theorems when writing proofs. Proofs build on previous knowledge and concepts from earlier lessons. So you may have to pull something way back from a couple chapters ago for your, for your proof, okay? So get your compass ready. We're going to be making a rhombus with our compass, and I hope I'll see you there. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.